good feeling when you're able to find people who like to play the kinds of things you like to play. That's one thing that helps to make friends, playing together. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling. You're growing inside. And when you wake up, ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling. The feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new. <laughs> I'll have more ideas for you, and you'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will, too. You always make each day such a special day. You know how? By just your being you. Only one person in the whole world like you. That's you yourself. I'll be back next time. Bye-bye. So I have to share when um, when we were putting the service together, and I um, sent Jane the information. Um, it resonated. It just all came together. And then yesterday, when we were talking about it, uh, she shared with us, as with me, this Mr. Rogers was a big part of our lives growing up. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, we're only in our thirties, but, mm -hmm. right. but <laughs> amen, amen, brother. Yeah. <laughs> for whatever time it's worth. But, uh, will you go to prayer with me this morning? All embracing and loving God. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all that come together and be together as the neighborhood. I ask that you open our hearts and open our minds and that we can be the receptors of those words that are spoken but let us mold and transform those words and let them guide us through what is spoken this morning. I ask you now to mold my lips of clay and form them into the words that are spoken and that the words that come from my mouth and the meditations that come from each and every one of our hearts, may they ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. <coughs> Amen. So over the last several weeks ago, we have been exploring and taking this journey through Fred Rogers' world of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And while we've been taking that journey, we've also been paralleling, paralleling them, I can't get the word out, um, with various pieces of scripture and exploring them in our own neighborhoods of life. Well, this morning we complete that journey through Fred Rogers' Neighborhood but the journey in our own neighborhoods continue. Many of us this morning are related with scripture that is commonly referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitudes are a part of that sermon. And it actually continues on from what we heard in chapter 5 all the way to the end of chapter 7. These scriptures contain various principles that we find repeated throughout the entire New Testament. The Sermon on the Mount, however, was the <coughs> longest recorded disclosure that Jesus gave while, was, while he was physically on earth. And we just heard the beginning of the scripture that when Jesus saw his mystery drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside of which he instructed and taught them. And on that hillside, the very first word that Jesus uttered at that point was blessed. We actually hear the word blessed nine times in the beginning of that scripture. The word blessed was actually translated from the Greek word makarios, which means happy or blissful. As you can see how it goes with the hap snappy, happy snappy and everything from Mr. Rogers. But the Greek culture describes Marcorius as a state of content and blissfulness unaffected by circumstances. Thus, the meaning behind the word translated becomes blessed. That always reminds me that if you if you have watched my big fat Greek wedding and my big fat Greek wedding too, how how they always take the word no matter what it is. They give me a word, any word, and it, I'll show you how it relates to Greek. 
-hmm. Right. This is one of those situations, okay? <coughs> but with all this, we have it known as the Beatitudes. The attitudes of being. Nice. And the ways that we witness and watch the world bringing joy in what we have within the world. If any of you were here last night um, at the concert, I'm going to say an awesome concert that Jane and Camille gave for us, we heard through their stories and music about these nine particular traits. And they emphasized the traits through their stories and through their music. And through the introduction of what the Sermon on the Mount was all about. And if you missed the great concert last night, I'm just going to tell you, in the future, when we have concerts, you need to show up because <laughs> you hear about it, it's like, yeah, I should have come. But anyway, so because of these nine traits, I'm just going to give them to you real quick in a nutshell. The humble, the mournful, the meek, the hungry, the merciful, the pure, the peacemakers, the persecuted, and the reviled. So this morning, my message may be a little bit different than, we, than what you're used to hearing on a Sunday morning, but at the same time, I'm going to add a little twist only because the world we live in has their own idea of what snap happy means in life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take some of these traits and compare them of how we might connect it with our own neighborhoods of life. Folks today, it's more than likely, more than just a list, but probably you probably would hear it in this world or this generation of the world in this way. Blessed are the proud, not the humble. Right. Blessed are the merrymakers, right. not the mournful. Mm. Blessed are the self-assertive, not mm. the meek. Mm. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those with beast-like appetites. Oof not spiritual appetites. All right. Blessed are the selfish, oh. not the merciful. Mm. Blessed are the impure, mm. not the pure. Blessed are the troublemakers, and we've got a few of those around <laughs> here, <laughs> not the peacemakers. Blessed are the compromisers, not the persecutor. And I've got a godson who likes to compromise with me all the time on the phone. <laughs> and blessed are the revilers, not the reviled. Mm -hmm. Then again, current philosophy doesn't really produce generally happy folks, do they? Mm -hmm. So again, we're looking at these through the eyes of the message, which is one of my favorite translations, and I think as Jane and Camille said last night, was one of theirs. But I think it gives us a better clarification how Jesus saw these traits and defined them, and that we might be able to grasp them a little more closely. So let's start. The humble. We heard this morning, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more God and God's rule. So what's really happening here is that Jesus isn't really enthusiastically praising poverty, but is really taking, really talking about the poor in spirit or the humble in spirit. When we are humble in our spirit, we usually are humble in the opinions of ourself, not out there boasting, and that we are willing to take criticism and constructive criticism in our lives. Therefore, as good Christians, we need to look at ourselves in what I call a constructive manner. And that's not always easy for any of us to do, including the pastor, but you need to look at it through the eyes of others. And when we are flashing our knowledge of how much we don't know, or we're listening and not taking that step back, when others are sharing things with us. That's not being humble. So we need to take that step back and listen. Now we may have the knowledge, but share that knowledge in a humbled or constructive way. The mournful. So we heard you're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. So what this is referring to is that people who mourn, people who mourn over their own lives, and who are exceeding sorrow within their sins. In life today, we are much more mourning over what sins we have yearned, except, except 
excuse me, let me say that again. So in life, we mourn more over our own sins than exceed over the sorrowful ones in our life. There is so much more mourning in the world today that we see, but we see very little tears of frustration. When I say tears of frustration, we don't take that step back and share that frustration in a, in a, God, in a God-like way, as I would put it. It's like, someone, let them take care of it. The meek. We heard that you're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves the proud owners of everything that you can't, of everything that can't be bought. So meek in this situation is defined as patience or long suffering while being injured. Um, this is also not to be mistaken with being weak physically. Okay? Say it again, it's not being weak physically but it should be looked as more of a sign of our strength. I personally think that we should be doing um, what we should be doing when we have that meek attitude. It's more that we are even toned and we don't take that Superman outfit and put our chest out and with, take that leap of faith off the tall buildings, but yet we take that strength through our respect and our <coughs> attitude towards others. So then we have the hungry and the thirsty. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you've ever eaten. So this is one of my favorite attitudes, only because there are so many folks out there who, for, who hunger for thirst and wealth. They're out there with the fame and the fortune, and they're out there boasting about everything they have and the pleasures of their success. And they go on and they on and on. And at the same time, they're never satisfied with that appetite because they want more. They, they have that beast-like attitude as we heard a little mm-hmm. bit earlier. And trust me, it's great to be successful and wealthy and all those other things. But when you brag about it in a boastful way, it's not appetizing. All right. <clears throat> I always say if you wear it on your shirt sleeves too much, you're going to have to take that shirt off and wash it at some point, and it's going to be all, all right. washed off that shirt sleeve. <laughs> all yeah. right. But what I say is <coughs> take that wealth, take that success, and share it with others as you would share it with yourself. It's always good to be a part of one than a part all there by yourself. A great example of this, in my mind, also is what we're doing out in the narthex, our Courage Winter Madness clothing drive. However, I came up with that, I don't know, but um, that hey. tagline, I was like, hey. it's a mouthful. But I encourage you over the next week, next Sunday is the last Sunday that we, that we have, um, I mean, we'll have further Sundays but in this drive, that we have to show this attitude by bringing the socks and the gloves and the hats and the caps and all that. And then if you um, don't want to do that, then put an extra 10 or 20 or whatever you have in an offering envelope and want Mark Courage on it. That's sharing the wealth. That's sharing the gift. And we all know that these kids who are out there every winter, homeless and have no place and nobody who loves them, just, we just turn that around and bring them into our lives. All right. And I'm so thrilled with what Courage is doing. They're in the process of, and they'll be here with us next week, just um, as a FYI or a looking ahead. Um, they're in the process of, of getting a building so they can get some of these kids off the street, a place for them to go, a shelter during the winter months or shelter even during the summer months that if they need just to drop in and need someone to talk to, Need someone to somewhere to wash their clothes or whatever there is, or get new clothes if they're, like I said, if their socks have holes in them. And all I'm going to say is, if you go to my Facebook page and, and see one of the postings that was posted, um, it's great. I, 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 this is what I love about having Camille in my life. She will find the most obscure. And I'm not going to even say what it is. You just have to go look, or just go take a look at the table, and I'm sure you'll figure it out on your own. But I just, it just put a smile on my face when I saw that post last night. I'm just going to leave it at that. 
<laughs> the merciful. <laughs> Scripture says you're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. All right. So what we're hearing here, folks, is that God's mercy has already been defined for us, that the hand of God is the hand of God that holds back on the judgment of God. Just think about it. God already shows us that loving, tender mercy in our lives each and every day. Therefore, we need to show that same tender, loving generosity and mercy and all that within our own lives and back out into the world in our own lives. The pure. You're blessed when you get inside your world, your mind, your heart, the pure right. Then you can see God from the outside world. I use the amp example of seeing from the outside in, not the inside out. But I also say, take from the outside in and look from the, out, look from the inside out, but then also look from the outside in. <laughs> so you kind of have to play with that back and forth. But we're speaking of the pure air, the pure water, the pure gold that is that absence of the purity in any of our lives. And we should be made pure again. I look at this as being that it's pure within our hearts, showing the genuineness towards life and towards others. Looking at those roads and avenues that we just went down over these past six weeks. We went through down lots of different avenues of roads through the neighborhood. And I invite you that if you haven't been here for the entire series to go back to um, the church's uh, Facebook page, my Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and take a look at those last six weeks of sermons and just reevaluate them in your life. It's being that authentic individual that God has created us to be. And I know that we have that because I see it each and every day with all of you and my encounters with all of you. The peacemakers. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. This is somewhat a cut and dry attitude as I call it. Um, it's exactly what it says. We are the peacemakers in life. Not creating conflict, not creating harm. And we're not backlashing at one another in our lives, but instead we share the peace from our souls and our heart building one another in life. A good example of this was last night. You know, as I just said when I was introducing uh, Jane and Camille, that they shared that I become a part of their extended family. But very truly, they are so much a part of my life and my family, and <clears throat> I adore, not that I don't adore my godson, but her kids were in my life first. <laughs> but I have watched these two young adults now grow within the life of MCC. That is showing the peacefulness within us. I hope that um, we have that opportunity down the road that I know they'll come back and visit, that they bring the kids with them next time. Because... Um, you know, I'm sure I'm embarrassing them, but at the same point, we'll tell you that the list goes on of the attributes that these two bring. Um, as some may have heard, and I maybe have shared this, you know, the church that I came from went through a lot of conflict recently over the transition of pastors and all that. We've gone through some of it here too. But it was people like Jane and Camille and at Founders who helped keep that peacemaking or that peacefulness amongst the church. The music program is one of the few programs at that church that has kept the peace and the tranquility around all of the harm and the conflict that's been going on. Amen. And if that doesn't speak volumes, have a chat with me because I'll, <laughs> I'll give you some more information, but it's just, um, it's, it's just really about peacefulness in our lives, making somebody feel at ease. Someone who may not be doing well in their life, whether they're dealing with conflict or dealing with struggles, taking that moment and just maybe putting your arm around them and saying, hey, I'm here for you. All right. I'm here to listen. All right. Okay? All right. 
<clears throat> the persecuted. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you deeper into God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of those traits that if you so possess it, um, you'll stand out in a crowd. Right. Mm -hmm. Trust me. And all I'm going to say here is that Jesus was not saying, blessed are you who are the persecuted because people do not agree with your political views, your religious views, your spiritual views, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what Jesus is saying here, blessed are those who are persecuted only for the right reasons. All right. I'm just going to leave it right at that. Yes. The reviled. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out and speak lies about you to discredit you. This is one of those attitudes that would be described as say all kind of evil against you and say it for no good reason and using it as if God or Jesus was saying it to you. In other words, there are so many people who not only hate Jesus and Christians and God, but those who hate the LGBTQI, and they say ABCD in the whole alphabet. Um, XYZ. XYZ, yeah, and all the other letters of the alphabet. And I can only think of one example here. Westboro Baptist Church. All right. Think about it. That's all I need to say, and you'll get what it means quick enough. <coughs> Don't need to go anywhere. So what we've been hearing here this morning, folks, is that Jesus describes our neighborhood of life <coughs> of what it really should be like. And it's that oh, so happy, oh so happy, snappy things in our life that we need to be. <coughs> we've been through a lot as a church. You've been through a lot as a church before I got here. We've been through a lot together, and we have a lot more to go as we move forward. And great things to come. Amen. Yes. We just kind of need to leave that, as I kind of leave that attitude at the back door when we walk in. You can pick it up on the way out, but leave it at the, leave it at the door when you come in. <laughs> We're all here for one reason, to love one another and to be a part of right. the family, be a part of the neighborhood. <laughs> So I just want to end my sermon this morning by, by sharing Fred Rogers, lyri Fred Rogers' lyrics at the end of what he said this morning. And he states that it's such a good feeling to know you're in tune. It's such a happy feeling to find you're in bloom. And, we're, and when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day, it's such a good feeling, a very good feeling. The feeling to know that we're all friends and sisters and brothers all in right. Christ. All right. So blessings upon each of you this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen.